How you doing folks? We're gonna have a lot of fun on the farm today. We got a bunch of harvesting that we wanna get done and I'm gonna give you a bunch of updates on what's happening with our animals. Things are going fairly fine in the chicken house here. One thing that I've been working on is trying to identify which of the Rhode Island hens are eating eggs. I'm always finding broken eggs and you see there's a whole bunch of eggshells in here and we've been getting fewer eggs from the Rhode Islands, which is our number one laying breed. So that's why I'm leaning towards somebody has got to be eating the eggs. And I don't know, maybe I have to spend an awful lot of time to observe them and watch them, which is difficult for me to do because I'm just so busy. Or maybe I'll have to get some kind of a little spy camera and see if I can identify that way. But I don't know, that's going to be a tough one to figure out. You know, of all of our chicken breeds, the light Sussex, which is the white and the black one, they always have the cleanest eggs. Absolute cleanest eggs. The black leghorn and the Rhode Island Reds occasionally lay on the ground and then the eggs become all poopy. The yellow ducklings are doing pretty well. They're growing at an incredible rate and I have to figure out where am I gonna put these guys. Or what I could do is move these younger ducks out and put these yellow guys in this coop right here. What I might do is move the geese that are in the goose booth over to where the other geese are. I'll just keep the one or two and move these guys into the goose booth. But I do need to figure out somewhere to put these guys because it's getting too mucky in here. I can't keep up. The new barred rock flock are looking beautiful too. They got the black and white kind of spotted colorings on them. They're getting real big and plump and strong and I'm I think I'm happy that we added them to the team this year. We've harvested 15 of the meat birds so far. We still have 15 to go. September 21st was our date to start harvesting. Um, we started a little bit before that, but we're taking a lot longer. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, we're getting some really good meat birds out of it. I'm really impressed with the Cornish Cross. Although they're a little bit big, but I mean, why would you not want a big chicken? More meat, right? Chickens are going nuts. They must think I'm up to something. It's a beautiful fall day here on the farm. Nice and sunny. It's a little bit breezy, but not really cold. So we still have a lot of nice weather to go before the snow hits. Side. Go outside. Come on now. Thank you. Put that there to block the entrance. And then those Rhode Island chicks can just stay in here. You know, they need to get a little bit bigger before I can integrate them with the Rhode Islands. So, because, you know, they'll probably kill them. But uh, I just need to get them some bedding a little bit later because it's all nasty in here. But these guys are okay in here. The meat birds are okay on the outside. And honestly, their days are numbered anyhow. I think I'm gonna leave these guys here for a minute cause I gotta figure out the geese and I gotta go do the pigs. It's a nice time of year, you know, it's not too hot to work in. I don't really have any major projects except for that new workshop that I'm working on. But it's getting ready for winter is many, many different jobs that I need to focus on at the same time as getting that shop done so like always I probably a bit off more than I can chew been taking a lot of time off work to film and build and <laughs> I'm an idiot what can I do I'm coming buddy I'm coming buddy 
You coming out? This Bobby's coming out. He's gonna get you. Yeah, he's gonna get you. Fuzzy, you're gonna go see Bobby? Are you sure, buddy? Bobby's right there. Or you wanna visit Uncle Rabbit? Okay. <laughs> Fozzie's crazy. Who knows what will happen to him. But Bobby, he's pretty cool. He's not uh, aggressive or anything like that. He's pretty good with everybody. I got to get inside now and let the piglets out. Hopefully Billy don't escape. Billy's doing pretty good. She's gaining a lot of weight back since she hasn't been nursing the piglets. I'm not quite sure if her milk's drying up. It's hard to tell. It does look like her stomach's getting a bit less full, so that's something. Fuzzy, you coming out? What are you doing? Let's go, get out of there. That's enough playtime. Come on. <laughs> Just go around them. Go around them. Fuzzy. Fuzzy. Come on, buddy. Fuzzy. Good boy. Working out okay keeping Billy in this area. <laughs> There's Fuzzy. You know, she's using this room as a bathroom, and that's okay. It's easy to shovel it up. And I just keep her water bins and her food bins here. And she's been separated from the piglets now for, what is it, eight or nine days. So, I don't know. I don't know how much longer I need to keep her separated, but she still has milk sacks from what I can tell. Hi piglets, you guys okay? You guys okay? Big scoop for the piglets. Here, pigs. I'll get you some water in a second, okay? So I've only sold one of the piglets right now. I sold it for a hundred dollars. I'm selling these guys only for a hundred dollars right now. We only sold one. I have seven more. I was thinking to keep one or two, but we'll see how it works out. It does cost a lot to feed the pigs. They're growing fast, eating a lot, and I really wish I can sell them, but I have no buyers as yet. Fozzie, let's go. Let's go. Come on. We still have a whole big bushel of these apples that fell to the ground. And my darling should be up at the orchard now harvesting a bunch of the apples off of the tree for us because they're ready. Because the red apples, we think they're maybe a Macintosh type, they're ready to pick. They're falling off like crazy and it's just wasting it. So I expect to see some apple crumble, apple pie, apple fritters, apple cinnamon, apple sauce, all of the apple stuff needs to get in my belly. I'm thinking we can take three of the other geese and bring them in with these two guys. Let's get the ducks out into the orchard so that they can enjoy more time out there along with the geese. The ducks and the geese are always happy when they're free ranging. I can see it in their body language and their demeanor. Molly, you okay? <laughs> you 
You're just having a nap under the duck house, huh? <laughs> now I have the new security goose booth that I built for the guard geese in the chicken yard. But I really plan on only keeping one or two geese here, hopefully a pair, and so they can have some company. But they're out right now, and I let them out on purpose. So hopefully from a distance I can distinguish males from females, um, because females they carry their undercarriage a lot lower than the males, and the males are supposed to have longer necks. But that's not always easy to tell when you're just, you know, a newbie like me. The trick is to corner the geese so that they don't have anywhere to go and then I can just pounce. And hopefully they won't fight, you know, the goose on goose. Hopefully. They're all pretty much adult size, but the two that are over there by the barn, they're a little bit older. So I don't know, they might take exception to new geese coming in, but I'll have to just bring one over there and see what their reaction is and play it by ear that way. See how that first one right there has a droopy wing? You see the wing that's hanging there? That's a condition. And I definitely wouldn't want to be breeding that. Okay? Are you guys okay? I can leave you alone? You're not gonna fight? A whole bunch of wild turkeys down there. Got a whole bunch of babies. Living a good life. that they're not fighting at all should be okay okay it's time to get these other smaller ducks I got tough little buggers to track down <laughs> I got a two-for-one deal right here though hey guys I'm not hurting you I'm just moving you to a new family okay there you go Job, I'm surprised that went as smoothly as it did with all those new ducks. It's like they just followed the crew, I guess. Okay, all the shifting arounds are done. Let's get up to the orchard and help my darling get some of those apples because she's been up there for a while. She might be wondering where I am. Last year, we pruned these apple trees really hard and cut them right back to try to reinvigorate these trees. They are quite old. And we think that it's a really abundant harvest this year. There's a lot of apples here. They're not really that big, these apples, you know. Some of them do have some brown spots on them. But when we cut them open, they're still okay on the inside. They'd be okay to, to bake with, you know, like an apple crumble or an apple betty or something. The ones that have like a beautiful skin like that, those are the ones that we eat fresh. It's like the sugar content is so high. Mm. See, it's so white. It's beautiful. And pruning fruit trees is a necessity to encourage future years of growth. But it's really kind of a skill to learn how to prune it properly. And I'm still in the learning phase. 
We're going to be able to do so much with these apples, not only feeding the animals, because the chickens especially, and the pigs, they love the apples. The dogs like the apples too, but we don't give them too much of it. But man, I see a lot of freshly baked goods in our future. We'll have to figure out how to store these apples long term, because it would be nice for them to last at least a few months. Apple picking is one of the activities here in Ontario, Canada that signifies the beginning of fall and the winter season inching closer and closer. Mm -hmm.